Hello everyone, welcome back. In this uh, lecture we will continue with employment income. Uh, now we will look at the difference between employed and self-employed. And we will also see that why do we need to differentiate between them two at all. Uh, now before we move to the, the, this topic, uh, the previous example which we have seen in the previous lecture, I've just um, uh, you know, solved this uh, example which was uh, relevant to national insurance contribution. And uh, in that example, I have concluded this was the answer, I guess, uh, if I did not uh, do it wrong. So the answer is yeah, for self-employed, which was Susan in our case, uh, which was a small example, the Susan was self-employed, so she was doing business, so she will have to pay uh, 1,075 uh, uh, class 4 NI, and she also have to pay 146 uh, pounds uh, of uh, uh, other one, uh, which is uh, class 2 in national insurance contribution, which is uh, uh, 2 pounds something uh, per week, right? So total was uh, 1,221 for uh, self-employed which was Susan and uh, Hadrick uh, which was on the same amount of salary as her uh, taxable profits uh, he would have paid 1433 so what does it mean what does it show us uh, that if you are employed uh, you will have to pay less national insurance contribution whereas if you are employed on the same amount of salary you will have to pay more national insurance contribution Right now, that is the reason. That is the merry reason why do we need to differentiate between self-employed and employed? So, I mean, there is a possibility that someone who is employed could show themselves as self-employed, right? So, for that reason, we need to differentiate that who is employed and who will be self-employed. So, what are the conditions to be classified as self-employed? Right now, I'll just share the screen with you and uh, we will read through the notes together uh, and we will try to identify uh, who is employed and who is uh, self employed. Uh, as you can see on your screen, this is a uh, page 20 of lecture notes, page 20 of lecture notes, as you can see on your screen, and it is uh, employment and self employment. Now the following factors should be considered uh, to distinguish whether a person is employed or self-employed. Now these are the uh, you know, factors which we will consider and, and then we will decide if someone is employed or self-employed. Now these ones are the same one which we, you have seen at F6. Uh, there is nothing new here but if you were exempt from F6 or if you have forgotten what you have studied uh, then this list is here for you. So employment involves contract of services. If you if you're in employment, it is con it is contract of services, whereas uh, self-employment is contract for services, right? That is a, a definition. Then degree of control exercised over the person doing the work. So if you are, uh, I mean, if you are doing a work, then you have control over it. It will also determine that you are whether you are self-employed or employed. Uh, sorry, uh, degree of control over the person doing the work. So if, if you have a control some, uh, on someone who is doing the work, then obviously you are, uh, I mean, that, that, that person will be employed to you. And if you do not have any control on that, then that will be uh, self-employed. So for example, if I ask someone to come to my house and, uh, you know, repair my heating, which is not working, uh, and if I have control over, over them, then he, they will be my employees. And if they are, I do not have any control, then uh, they are self-employed. And most likely they will be. And we'll have to see other reasons as well. So let's see other ones. Whether he must accept further work. Say, for example, if he came to me and he, you know, repaired the, you know, heating, then I asked him to look at my boiler as well. So if he must accept that work, I ask him to do it uh, now, and you must do it. And if he says, all right, okay, then he's my employee. And if you just you know, say, no matter, I can't do it, uh, then he will be self-employed. Whether the other party must provide further work. So if I have to, as an employer, if I have to provide other work, then you know, there'll be employees. 
and if I do not have to, then it will be uh, self-employed. Whether he provides his own equipment, so if someone comes to your home with, his, with their own equipment, it shows that they are self-employed. Whether he hires uh, his own helpers, it is also an indication of self-employment. What degree of financial risk he takes, if he takes much financial risk, then he is self-employed. Uh, what degree of responsibility for investment and management he has, if he has responsibility for investment and management, he is self-employed. Whether he can profit from sound management, uh, if he can profit from sound management, then uh, he will be uh, a self-employed person. And whether he can work when he chooses, uh, then he will also be uh, considered, he will again be considered self-employed. The wording used in any agreement between the parties is a strong indication, it is a strong evidence of whether someone is employed or self-employed. So whatever the wording will be in the, within the contract, within the agreement, and that will tell us that whether someone is employed or self-employed. Right? Now we'll study the further rules, uh, which are uh, intermediary uh, legislation rules, which is 30, number 35. I've written on the board as well, so it is uh, intermediary legislation number 35. And what is that basically? That wh why we have done that previous example and uh, why did I put this answer here? In order to show you that uh, if you are self-employed, then you will have to pay less national insurance contribution whereas as compared to the employment, right? Now that is the reason we are going to study this rule, which is uh, personal service companies or intermediaries uh, legislation, legislation 35. Now what happens is that, as I, is, uh, as I said earlier, uh, that mm, there is a possibility that if it is up to you and you know that if you would be employed you will have to pay more NI and if you would be self-employed you will have to pay less NI. Now the chances are that you will show yourself, if it is up to you, you will definitely show yourself as uh, self-employed instead of being employed, even if you are employed. Reason is you will have to pay less NI, right? Now in order to avoid that, these rules which are personal service companies rules or uh, intermediaries uh, leg legislation 35 rules are introduced. Now what happens is that what used to happen was that uh, because people start to know about this thing that uh, they will have to pay less NI if they are self-employed and if they will pay uh, more NI if they are employed because you know everyone uh, in the world has got one friend who is accountant so you know their friend tell them that if you are self-employed you will have to pay uh, less NI. So what used to happen was that uh, everybody started to show themselves as self-employed instead of being employed. Now even, you know, someone who was working for, say for example, a small company, although he was working for that company, but they show themselves as you know, self-employed. Now, the reason for employee, say for example, if I am an employee, it is not only beneficial for me, now think about it uh, in a broad way. So if I am working for accountancy tube, right, if I am working for accountancy tube, I will have to pay NI if I am employed. If I show them, if I show myself as self-employed, or although I am employed by accountancy tube, but if I show myself as self-employed, then I will have to pay less tax because as shown by the example here of Susan and Hadrick, if I would be self-employed, I will pay less tax. Now, it is not only beneficial for me, but it is also beneficial for accountancy to you. Because if I show myself as employed, they will have to pay tax as well. They will have to pay NI as well, which is a class one secondary NI, if you remember. So they will have to pay on my salary, uh, on my bonus, and they will also have to pay on my bo uh, benefits as well. You remember? They will have to pay on the benefits. So what happens is that it is not only beneficial for employee, but is also beneficial for the company to show the person as self-employed. So that was the merry reason uh, everybody used to show themselves as self-employed. Long, long ago, I used to work for a company. So when I went for the interview, they asked me to, uh, you know, they, you know, asked me different stuff. Then, uh, then they asked me that, yeah, all right, okay, then you can join, but we will show you as self-employed. You will be self-employed. 
you will be responsible for your own MI. So, I mean, I was employed there, but they asked me to show myself as self-employed. So the reason was uh, because they will pay less than I, and I will pay less than I as well. So, you know, I knew the reason, so I had to, you know, tell them that it is not right. So we eventually agreed that I will be an uh, employee. So what happens is that I told you that the reason is uh, just simply that you will have to pay less than I if you are self-employed. So these rules, which is a personal service company rule, which we are going to study now, uh, as you can see on your screen now, uh, personal service companies, uh, what happens is that the reason is that instead of showing themselves as employees, they show uh, as self-employed. So, as you can see on your screen, so before, uh, someone was used to work for an employer and they pay them as salary. And it was an employee, taxpayer was employee. So payment of salary, as you can see beneath that. Now, after that, what he did is, instead of showing themselves as employee, he made a company. It was just a nominal company, so he registered itself as a company, and then they provide services through that company, right? So he was an employee, but he thought, I'm paying more than I, and my employer is paying more than I as well, so why don't we register a company just between us, all right? So what happens is that I will provide you same services, but through a company. So if I provide the services through a company, uh, I will be self-employed. So here, at, as you can see on your screen, so what happens after that employer who is a client, as a client, uh, you know, will take services from personal service company, but uh, eventually that same person will be providing the services. So what he will do is, uh, he will take minimum salary from the personal service companies and he will take a maximum of dividends. Now, as you know that uh, tax rate on dividends is much less uh, as you as you know and also he will also be eligible for nil rate ban of 5,000 pounds. So that is the merit reason. So he will not only have to pay less uh, NI uh, but also you know he will have to pay uh, less tax on the dividends because he's taking dividends uh, as much as he can. So taxpayer normally prefers to be classified as self-employed rather than employed uh, as it results in less taxation and national insurance contribution. <clears throat> there are anti-avoidance rules which are known as IO35 provisions which prevent employees avoiding tax and NIC through offering their services through an intermediary such as personal service company. A such personal service company may pay work a minimal salary and as much dividends resulting in overall reduction in applicable income tax rates and a national insurance contribution. Now, if, in, if an individual performs service for a client through a, a contract between a client and third party known as personal service company rather than a contract between client and the worker as you know employment and uh, you know employer and employee such that if the service were, uh, were to be performed by the worker under contract between himself and the client, then it would be regarded as employee, right? Then in such case, the payments to the worker will be subject to PAY, which is pay as you own and national insurance contribution, as it was as follows. So if you come to know in the question that, uh, you know, uh, a person was working for a company, then HMRC said, no, it is not right, a right way. Uh, you are uh, employed to that company, so IR35 rules will apply. So it will tell you in the question that IR35 rules will apply. So, if it says so, then we'll have to do the calculation in this way. So you will have to learn this pro forma, and uh, you will have to solve the questions with this with the help of this pro forma. So what happens is that we take 95% of the uh, all payments and benefits received from the client. So, you know, it is just a client, it is made up client, basically it is an employer. So we'll take 95% of all payments and benefits received from client. Then what we deduct is expenses which are uh, followed as allowable deductions. They will be given to you in the, in the question. Then deduct expenses incurred for performance of duties and also deduct the capital loss on uh, plant and machine reused. And finally deduct uh, uh, any salary and pension contribution and employees NIC paid by third parties 
which is personal service company. So if personal service company has paid any NI, that will also be deducted. Now this is the net amount. Uh, we have to calculate deemed employer NIC payment on that. So what we take is that answer which we have just calculated, which is, uh, you know, double X, uh, we'll have to multiply by 13.8% uh, and 13.8 over 113.8. So that uh, we'll have to deduct that amount, which is a deemed employer insurance. And the net amount is going to be our deemed employment income. <coughs> Excuse me. So what you what you will have to do is you will have to learn this uh, learn this table. Only then you will be able to solve this solve the question on these uh, you know IR35 rules. We will see see a question on this in the next video. Uh, then you will be able to understand this uh, in a better way uh, because uh, these are a little complex. Uh, but if you learn this uh, you know pro forma, then it will be very very easy for you. And also remember that when there are deductions here. You know, there are three sorts of deductions, or, or even more than that, you have seen here. Uh, expenses which are followed by allowable deductions, then expenses incurred for the performance of duties and all that. So you might not see all of them in the question. You might see just one of these expenses in the question. So don't worry. Uh, whatever you see in the, inf in the question, whichever information you see, just put into this pro forma and you will be, uh, you know, you'll find it very, very easy. Uh, however, we'll do a question on this in the next video. Now this is a, a test uh, t and it is 30 minute test very very easy I would say uh, try to do it yourself on your in your own time and make sure that, that uh, you s do it in 30 minutes and 30 minutes are even more than enough I'll just go through with you quickly so that uh, you do not face any problem Susan worked for full time employment uh, in the UK during 5th of October 2016 to 5th of uh, February 2017. Our UK income and expenses during the tax year 1617 uh, are as follows. Uh, now other income was £50,000, then employment income was £8,000, and pay was al already deducted which was £500. So this pay will also be in this pay will be deducted at end of the question where you where we deduct the tax deducted at source all right then there's a rent now susan is joint owner of the property along with her husband right so it is a total rent so you'll have to divide it by two because her husband is equal owner of it so it will be divided 50 50. then there's a bank interest we don't need to gross it up so uh, same applies to dividends as well the child benefit is given for the reason in order to see that whether he will, she will have to pay child benefit charge or not, all right. Uh, then there is income from discretionary trust. Remember that 45% tax is paid on that, so we'll need to gross it up. Then there are expenses: interest paid on loan for partnership, uh, qualifying interest, a personal pension contribution, 20%. Uh, you know, 20% will pay will be paid by HMRC, so you only pay 80%. You get his a hundred percent and remember that there are three benefits of that as well personal pension contribution three benefits and finally investment in SEIS yes, you remember 50 percent tax reducer so that will also apply and what is the tax payable by Susan for tax year 1617 right that's it and uh, I will see you in the next lecture and uh, with the more interesting stuff of ACCP6. Good luck to you and uh, ta-da!